All right, g'day guys and girls, it's Phil here from the next Savvy 2 Hours, and today I am coming to you from the Suzuki, and we're heading out to do a uh, product review for you. And today's review is going to be on the Meal Spec Individual Flameless Ration Heater. Uh, so this was sent to us by Survival Storehouse in Australia. So first and foremost, I want to do a big shout out to them to say thank you very much. We have done a review for them before on the mainstay ration bars, the five-year shelf life um, emergency rations, which were fantastic, and that predominantly was one of the main products they were stocking at the time. But it looks like they're branching out into some more diverse products, this being one of them. So we got sent a couple of these out, and today I'm heading off to a location to do a test for them. Um, Millspec do a number of different um, a couple of different bags. One of them is a cooker and one of them is a heater. This one is the individual flameless ration heater, um, although today we're actually going to be cooking with it. So there's enough heat in this um, to do that. So from the reviews I've seen and the videos I've seen, um, there's enough heat in there to boil water. There's enough heat to cook eggs. People have done some pretty interesting things. Um, and so I'm going to try and spice it up with a fish dish today. I'm not a fish fan, but um, I think this suits itself quite nicely to cooking fish, it'll be a good test of it. Um, and so today we're going to do a Thai fish dish um, using some beautiful New Zealand gurnard, which is a nice white fillet, um, oily, thick piece of fish. Um, although the ones I got were quite small, so I am um, going to do a couple of them. And we're going to do that with a Thai rice with um, lemon and, um, well, lemon zest and lime. So that's going to be interesting. And uh, see how that works. So the video is going to be in two parts, really, uh, not including this introduction. First part, we're just going to look at the actual product itself. Because there's a few precautionary things you need to think about with this. It does produce heat, and it's, uh, well, between 104 and 110 degrees Celsius so very hot indeed and so obviously there's a chance there for scalds and burns because it's using steam um, but all you really need there is a bit of common sense and to um, you know just be careful when you're handling that so we'll go over that its sizes some of the specs off the um off the website and the product brochures and then from there we will go into actually using the um the heater and we're going to cook that fish up so uh, we're heading off to where are we heading? Well, initially I thought we'd head out to Mount White Station, which is what I posted on the Facebook page. But if you possibly can or can't see behind me, it's actually um, raining here in Christchurch or Canterbury. And um, if it's raining this much down here on the flats, it's more than likely pissing down in the mountains. So I was intending to go to Mount White Station, High Country Station, and um, camp out by the river and do this. but. It, if there's a lot of run, uh, water flowing through it, it just presents a bit of a danger with those um, river levels rising. So the first place we're going to cross pass is Mount Lind uh, Lake Linden, which is a beautiful um, lake sort of on that, just starting on the divide from east to west coast, or coming up to Arthur's Pass, so that's really the middle point. But it's where you're coming through the beach forests and, and rainforest sort of areas of, of the Southern Alps. It's gorgeous. Um, we'll have a look out when we get there, see what the weather's like. It wasn't supposed to be raining today, but you know, this is what um, preparedness um, and uh, you know, thinking outside the box and changing with things is all about. So, we'll just find out um, what it looks like when we get to Lake Linden. If it's uh, good to go, we might head on further to the Mount White Station. If it's not, we'll stop at Lake Linden and we'll cook up this. Uh, feast I hope and test out this product so thanks for joining me today I know um, I'm going to enjoy it I hope you guys do too and uh, we'll catch you when we get closer to the uh, location cheers all right so we're here to take a look at this um, meal spec flameless um, ration heater that we've got here that I introduced before and the first thing we're going to do is just take a look at the basics about it um, before we actually take it out of the packet and do some cooking now it is uh, made in the United States of America, it's a fantastic product and uh, basically it is rated to reach temperatures of around 104 degrees Celsius and uh, that is about 12, 10 to 12 seconds 
after you've added the water to the um, flameless um, pack inside it. So what you actually get is you get this meal spec bag here. Um, it's quite sizable. Uh, I don't actually have the exact dimensions for it and that sounds pretty rank but if you look at this, this is my Osprey 2 litre um, water container here and it's about exactly the same size. But anyway, I'll find out the open um, dimensions for you and I'll put them on the description there. Um, but it is incredibly portable. It's very light as well. So what we'll do is we'll just zoom out on that and we'll fold it up and fold it up it measures around about 20 centimeters by 12 centimeters so there it goes there 20 by roughly 12 and only weighs 60 grams so um, that's almost nothing you could easily stack a dozen or two dozen of these in your bug out bag your bug out vehicle your emergency preparedness kits now i'm using it out today in the bush um, in the mountain sort of alpine region where we've got a total fire ban so i can't go lighting a fire to cook different story if it's an emergency situation but it's not so this is ideal um, fantastic uh, burns for about 12 minutes or runs for about 12 minutes obviously there's no flames in this and uh, reaches between 100 104 degrees celsius uh, so looking at the um, website if you go to the website there and i'll put the link again it's got some information on it now they make two bags one's the cooking bag and that has around about a 60 minute run time and the other one's the heating bag so primarily these are used for heating up meals um, but at 100 degrees 104 degrees celsius for 12 minutes there's a lot of things you can cook so they're very versatile um, looking at the website it also indicates that there's been no failure reports of these not working i.e opening them up putting the water and getting a dud whereas if we look at other ones like the military heaters and FEMA heaters over in the US of A you've got between a, um, a 25 and a 35 percent roughly failure rate there so um, that would not be appreciated if you're out bush and opening this up and it wasn't working you'd be pretty miffed about that um, how do they work let's have a look at it basically here um, at the top you've got a zip lock here basically you open it up and if we reach down the side there and um, what I might do is just move that camera up a bit so we can get a better view into the shelter of the vehicle here. All right, beautiful. So we've got the packet here, the main packet, and uh, inside it here we've got the heating element, not to be eaten. Uh, yeah, fairly obvious. It's, it is a chemical reaction, so you don't want to go e eating this, but you know. Stranger things have happened. There are some weird people out there with weird fetishes. Um, it's sealed in this foil bag, so it's sealed from the elements, which means it's not going to accidentally activate. Now, when I did blow this up, as in put some air through the steam hole at the top there to try and make it look puffy and take a photo, I noticed there was some condensation on the inside. Now, that could have very easily um, caused the element to activate if it hadn't have been in this bag. So that was lucky in itself. Um, to activate it, all we're doing is we're tearing here inside it you've got the heating element you're taking that element um, and I'm not going to now because there's condensation inside this but we will do in a moment when we actually cook the food um, and you're putting it inside the bag here down the bottom uh, then you can add your food stuff or well, you can you can do it either way you can add your food like it says on here first then add the packet or in fact actually no it doesn't it says put the element in first but either way that you do it you get that element in there, put the meal in as well, then you're adding 100 mils of water. Now that's only around about a half a cup or just slightly less um, to that. And then what we're going to do is close that Ziploc at the top there as quick as possible, as tight as possible, and put it down. Ideally when you're putting that water in, like it says on here, you've already got it leaning against something because it's going to react reasonably quickly, within 12 seconds according to the website and the paperwork that comes with it. And uh, and at that point you're going to get very hot steam. Now if you look here closely, and I'll take a close up of it, it says here caution hot steam, and then I believe this is potentially Spanish, but don't hold me to that. Um, and you've got a hole here where the steam comes out. It's going to be very hot, you know, obviously steam's 100 degrees, 
um, and it's in this condensed bag so it's going to be coming out at a high speed and in a condensed form and that is going to burn you good if you uh, decide to put your hand there so you put the water in and then you have it leaning down against something and you do that quite quickly so that you don't get burnt um, I'll vice versa uh, once you've actually finished cooking the item you're going to want to open up the bag and potentially look at using gloves or something to protect your hands because first thing that's going to happen open it up bam you're going to get hit with that steam there all right you got your little thumbs and fingers around there going to get burnt so ideally gloves or potentially even tongs or something like that to get those meals out if you're not too bothered by it you could even leave it to cool down a bit further so it got to a more appropriate temperature but if you are going to be opening it straight away think about your safety you don't want to get burns um, and that's pretty important um, ideally with anything that you're cooking um, you want to use it in a well ventilated area you know this does have is it a chemical reaction um, it doesn't say too much about it but it does say that you need to use it in a ventilated area and that goes um, with it, with any sort of cooking that you're doing so we're in a pretty good spot today we're out in the WAPS cooking um, obviously chemical reaction you've got the water that you put in here and the actual heating element you don't want to go and drink that water afterwards it's not going to be safe or fit for human consumption all right so don't go drinking that afterwards um, don't use near open flames I'm assuming that's because this packet is probably highly flammable being plastic um, so yeah, there's an obvious one, like we're not near a flame here, but if you're in a hut or you're out doing cooking somewhere near a, um, a fire or you're using a fire to keep warm, don't store these near it. And uh, obviously once it has been used, you don't want to be reusing this sleeve because it's going to be contaminated. Um, and it's basically a one, one use, one time, and then get rid of it. So actually what we're going to do now um, is we're going to test it out and cook this fish. So I'll, I'll set up the little kitchen here on this fold-out table. We'll set our cooker here to 12 minutes and uh, let's get cooking. Alright, so this is where the magic is all going to happen now. Once I've got this on the go, I'm going to prepare the salad. Real basic, um, but in the meantime, we've got the meal spec bag here. Now you would have seen this in the little instruction part here, um, and I've already opened it but basically what you've got in here is you've got a packet this one contains the chemicals it's called the heating element basically you've got a tear here sign and all you're doing is tearing that open all right this becomes rubbish goes in the rubbish bin. simple as that leave nothing behind um, and then we're taking this pouch here we're putting it back in the bag all right and uh, what I'm going to do first is add the uh, put the food in there. So I've got my rice. I'm just going to double check those seals one more time. Um, the water in the off waste from this is um, not drinkable, basically. So you don't want it getting in your food all that much. So I've put my rice in there, and next to that, I'm going to add my fish one more time checking that seal, folding that bag over there, just peace of mind, and I'm going to put it in the bag there. Alright, so both rice and fish are sitting snugly in that bag now. This is where the magic's going to happen. So, I'm just going to take that salad material over the side here, and this a little makeshift kitchen here and then we've got the bag it's sitting nicely against something here now this is going to get hot very quickly in my water bottle here I've got 100 mils of water and uh, what I'm going to do is add that to the bag then we're going to be sealing it up really quickly uh, and you'll see how um, quick this reacts so what I might do is just Do that. Yep. So we'll get that water. We're going to seal it up really quickly. I'm going to tip it 
down this front side here so I've got a bit of time before it gets to the back where that heat bag is and then I'm going to let it dribble on the back there and wet that pouch up and uh, shake it just a little bit to wet it out and uh, we should see ourselves a reaction there so can already feel it heating up I think we're going to see that happen fairly quickly yep you can see that bag starting to uh, grow in size there here it goes boom all right and I don't know if you can see that we'll zoom in on the end of that oh yeah you can definitely see in there and we've got steam so we'll start the timer there roughly 12 minutes we should have that heat for and uh, we'll come back in uh, 12 minutes time and see what that's looking like in the meantime I'll just um, wash up the knife here so the chilies of it put together this little lettuce and tomato salad and um, hopefully we'll be having a nice dish of fish rice salad and uh, showing you just how well this uh, unit here works. Alright, so thanks for joining me again. Um, that fish is about 30 seconds off, or well, the buzzer is anyway. Uh, I've just cleaned up the table here, put the rubbish away. What I have done is I've folded over the bag once the major um, steam stopped, say after the first five, six minutes. I folded it over so it kept more of the heat in. Um, I don't know if that it didn't seem to stop the um, reaction or if that's the right way to do it but it's a pretty thick um, you know fish is quite a thick product obviously so um, I wanted to make sure that was uh, cooked nicely and hopefully it is but that is our 15 or uh, 12 minutes up there so um, we'll put that up there um, I've got the plate here which is just a recycled tray and the salad it's sort of wilted a bit but Jesus it tastes um, tastes bloody good I'm not gonna lie to you um, and so the moment of truth really we're gonna cut this open still a fair bit of heat there I mean it actually cooled down a bit but it's a very cold day out here in the bush too so that's probably had a bit to play with I think if you really wanted to uh, sort of get this working in a, in a better way not that I'm saying it hasn't worked but in a help it out um, you'd want to do it in a more open button closed environment say I might do it um, bring it inside the back of the car where my table is and other prep stuff is as opposed to out here in the wind where it's been blown around or even put a towel or something over it just to keep some of that heat in but anyway enough jibber jabber the moment of truth now um, geez even I've got myself worried but we're just going to um, it says to you here but Here, there. Yeah. As we said, um, heat seems to have dissipated a lot from that, so hopefully, it's not, uh, it is cold out here. We'll just crank that open and what we've got there is some reasonably well cooked fish, not totally though, unfortunately. Um, and the rice and what we'll do is we'll just discard that water so that's a bit unfortunate but that should still be uh, should still be edible so we'll get us some rice out jeepers that um, unfortunately that might have passed on that rice because that bag seems to have punctured so I might have had that a bit close to that heater element the fish looks to be alright though um, I don't know if that was just a dodgy bag or what's happened there but the heat seems to have um, melted that so I might have done something wrong there so I might skip the rice just in case and we'll just go for fish and salad Right, that smells divine anyway. 
so oh no it does look like it's cooked nicely through that pink color was actually just the skin there so that fish looks like it's actually quite perfectly done there so look at that even the flies are hovering around because they're hungry no that was just the skin actually so Skin's a bit pink on the outside, but if we look at that fish there, holy moly, it's dripping goodness everywhere. And that is done. Now, that is not the most elegant presentation, that much I will give myself. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just put the rubbish um, that's left over in this steam bag here. We're going to be taking that home with us and cleaning up. But that fish is cooked to perfection. Let me just get up there and show you what I mean. Um, that fish is cooked beautifully. Look how it just breaks apart. Um, it's clear. It's almost translucent. It looks like it's had the perfect cooking time there. So, the only way to find out is to try it. Holy moly. <coughs> that is amazing. Right, so thanks very much for uh, joining me out here today in the, in the gorgeous wilderness that is the Arthur's Pass, or sort of alpine region of New Zealand, or coming up close to it. Um, I finished the test with the meal spec uh, flameless food ration heater and uh, the fish here is cooked to perfection now I'm not a fish fan but this tastes um, gorgeous um, the product itself worked fantastically uh, one, one thing I did find out here in the cold because it is cold today even though I'm not wearing a jacket um, is that maybe um, not, a, not as much heat went into the product so next time I use that I, I'd either use it in a more enclosed outside space as in well ventilated but um, maybe cover it up or put it in between something so more of that heat's retained and what I did do about halfway through was I folded the bag over so the steam didn't escape as much and, and more of it went into it because it's quite a thick piece of fish um, that being said it cooked to perfection it worked really well it definitely activated within those 12 seconds which is what it indicates that it would do the heat was intense there's a lot of steam there uh, and, it, and it worked perfectly you can't fault it it packs up nice and small easily fit 10, 12, 20 of those in, in either your bug out bag, bug out vehicle, whatever way you want to prep or look at that for survival for the outdoor use. I'm in a fire free zone at the moment even though it's, the weather's poor it's still a full fire ban. So for me perfect way of cooking something having it hot without using a fire. And uh, um, the product worked as it, as it advertised that it would do. So. Another fantastic product from Survival Storehouse Australia. Thank you very much for uh, letting us um, do a review on that and for allowing me to come out here and uh, take some time off and actually enjoy nature again. And um, to anyone thinking about purchasing these, check out the other videos and reviews there. Um, you know, Emmanuel Macula or from Kuya Adventures. There's a lot of other people, Ultimate Survival Guide. Um, who have done fantastic reviews, gone over it in more detail perhaps on the specifications and, and made some interesting uh, meals out of it. And in the meantime, I'm going to sit here and enjoy the remainder here of my Thai um, gurnet with a basic chilli and um, lime, coriander, tomato, lettuce salad. And um, thanks very much for joining me and I'll catch you in the next video. Bon appétit.